On the pedal harp, we've got our three major components. We have the body with the soundboard. We have the neck with the tuning pins. We have the column. But down here at the base of the column and the base of the body, we run into some other parts. On the pedal harp, this piece here is called the baseboard. It actually is an integral part. It's the fourth piece, which has to be on every pedal harp. And this is called the baseboard. What you see here, this piece of wood right here, that is all the baseboard is. It's right here. It doesn't go down into here. This down here, below the baseboard, below the bottom of the body, is something called the, the, the base. The base, of course, has feet on it. The column, I mentioned that the column actually leans. But the bottom of the column is actually flat and perfectly level. The whole column is made perfectly cylindrical, perfectly flat on the bottom, perfectly flat on the top. So how does it lean? Well, it leans because it's sitting on top of this piece here. This lighter piece of wood is actually called the column block. The column ends, I have my finger on the column, I have my finger on the column block. The column block is actually a piece of wood that is actually cut and angled just slightly to push the column off on the angle that we want it. So that's the purpose of the column block. The column block also acts as a footing and sp starts spreading the pressure out along that baseboard. So the baseboard is held on, is attached. When we take the base off, we see that the baseboard is kind of like floating out in, in nowhere. That's because the baseboard is actually attached to the inside of the body. So the baseboard and the column are actually sitting on the inside of the body. The part, they become part of the body, so to speak. Now down here at the bottom here, we've got our base. This would be called the base front and then the base back. The base front is, you know, on some harps is, is uh, carved and uh, the artwork is put on there. Some of them they are very plain, very, very, very smooth, uh, uh, very sleek looking. That, that's still called the base front and this is still called the base back. This would be called the front foot, the left front foot. And then back over here, this would be the left rear foot. Underneath the feet, there's a little, uh, 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 there's, there is a support on there. On the rear feet, there's actually called the rear shoe. Uh, and the shoe actually has a rubber insert on it so that when you shoulder it back, when you lean the heart back, the rubber shoe gets engaged. The rubber shoe is not touching the ground right now. It only touches when you roll, when you lean it back. Under the front foot, to protect the foot, to protect the wood, on this particular kind, and on many harps, there's a, a, uh, a glide or a front shoe. There's a shoe, there's a rear shoe and a front shoe. And the front shoe is on this harp. On um, harps, on uh, several different manufacturers of harps, under, they don't have shoes on the front feet. On, uh, on, in there, they actually have wheels so that the harp can actually be pushed forward slightly at a very slow rate and, uh, 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 and roll. You can actually pull the harp backwards. Quite often though, I find when I put, pull the harp backwards that it kind of rocks left to right, so you gotta be careful about doing that. Um, so down here, we have the pedals. The pedals have different parts on there. Uh, the red, this is the red pedal felt. On this particular type of harp, it has, red, it has felt on it. And they could, in some harps, it's actually not felt. It could be a, a rubber and plastic com com uh, 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 combination. Uh, now, this is called the, the pedal brass. On all harps, pedal harps have these pedal brass that folds, articulates up and down, fo it folds up and down. Uh, these are called pedal caps that are on here. So the pedals, as we know, they go from flat to natural to sharp, to natural to flat. And they do that by attaching to, uh, underneath the center of the column here, there's actually rods or cables. And those cables attach, they run through a little hole, it's a little slot that's in the middle of the column that goes up here and attaches up here to the action. The harp bass. 
This is the back of the base of the harp. And the base starts right here and goes all the way down here to the rest of it. This, of course, is the back of the body. This part in the base is this is called the natural notch. This where the pedal goes into natural, that's the natural notch. Where the pedal comes down to this point here, that's called the shelf or the natural shelf. From here, we're going to go to the sharp notch. So those are the terms for this. For this, the this is called the 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 pedal slot. In this case, the E pedal slot. Now, sometimes on some harps, this is called the pedal brass. This part right here. This rubber part is called the pedal cap. Sometimes the pedal brass can get loose. And if you have a bolt or nut or screw on here, depending on the manufacturer, you could get a, on this particular harp, you could get a, uh, a, a six-sided tool. It's called an Allen key sometimes, Allen wrench. And you can use that to tighten up the bolt here. Sometimes you need to grab both sides of it in order to do that. And other parts of the base are, this is the foot. That's a foot. So we have four feet on this harp. These are the rear feet, of course, and those are the front feet. On the rear feet, there are two, there are screws that hold and attach the feet on. And sometimes they get loose, especially over moving, because the back feet get a lot of pressure every time you lean the harp back. To play, you're leaning on those feet. And also, too, uh, a lot of the dollies, almost all of the dollies, Move the harp by lift by putting all the pressure on these rear these rear feet here. So the problem that can happen with the rear feet is is that they can come loose if the rear foot gets loose or any of the foots, even the front foot gets loose, they could they could uh, uh, break. And I'll explain to that a little bit another a uh, little bit later. Here's the what's called the rear shoe. The rear shoe has a little piece of rubber in it. That's called the rear shoe insert. Depending on the manufacturer, there are little variations on the theme. These are the front feet. On some manufacturers, on this one, there's a called the front shoe. And some on some manufacturers, there's actually a wheel here. Um, and all of those parts are, are of course, are replaceable uh, because they get a lot of work down here at the base. These are just protector glides, protector little bits of steel. Here, 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 and here are what are called the base bolts, and they actually hold the base onto the harp. And uh, <clears throat> and you just uh, need to unscrew them. Um, all harps in the world, the tool that is needed to take the base off that fits those base bolts is the tuning key. The uh, other parts that are inside here are this here, of course, is the E, the E pedal lever. Okay, when it has everything on it, it's called the pedal lever or the pedal lever assembly. This, on this particular kind of harp, is a pedal spring, and that's what pushes the harp into flat. This is the pedal spring stud. It attaches it on the other side. One attaches to the pedal lever, the other attaches to the pedal spring stud. The pedals, like I said, they attach up to a rod or cable that comes up through the column all the way up to the top. And in behind this area right in here, it attaches to the mechanism. So the rods that are going up and down attach to the mechanism. Right behind here, we can't see it because it's all contained inside here, is a group of gears. That group is called the main action, or it could be called the group, the command group. This command group is a set of gears. It's just the, one of the great magics of the harp is it takes this up and down rod, just moving up and down, and it takes it and it, tur it, it, it moves the gears inside here, and the gears tell the, the, the discs when to turn through that link chain that I talked about. 
So the links, the rods take this up and down motion, then it gets turned by the main action into a left and right motion. And that left and right motion, as it comes through here, how does it turn a disc when it's just going back and forth? Well, inside here, the link attaches to another part in there that's the arm that's attached onto the disc. And so the link comes in, attaches here, and then the link gets pulled. The spindle is here, so the disc actually turns with, with the arm attached to it. Now, the disc is attached to something that we usually refer to as the spindle. Sometimes it's called the axle, but the real better terminology for that is the spindle. The disc is screwed onto the spindle. The spindle passes through the front plate of the action, and beyond there, it, it hooks up to an arm, and the arm is what's attached to the link. So the, uh, uh, the spindle that's in there rotates. It just turns. So moving the pedal up and down is actually created up in here a cylindrical ro rotary movement inside the action. So the discs, the discs um, are come in different shapes and different sizes, and it's all just dependent upon what the use is. On almost all modern harps, like I think on all modern harps, you'll note that these discs are what are called oblong discs. They're, they're, and they have, for the base wires, and they have plastic sleeves on them, as opposed to the other discs over here, which are usually referred to as round discs. Now, round discs, they, they don't have plastic sleeves on them. Why not? Well, the reason is, is that the gripping and holding of the, of the metal wire string on another piece of steel, on another piece of metal, is just bound to make noise. And so they have changed that, because on the old, old harps, they actually, when they first started, they, didn't, they had to learn their lesson, and they used metal on these lower oblong discs. So now they have plastic on there. It actually kind of quiets it down when you, when you actually engage the pedal, when you, do a, uh, when you move the pedal. Now, if that was a metal disc, a metal pin on that disc, it would engage it a lot louder, a lot more noisy, a lot more rattle when it would hit a piece of metal. So it would make pedal changing in particular really kind of noisy. So we have the, the oblong discs and the round discs, and they come down down as they come down the, the fall of the harmonic curve down this way. You'll notice that the discs continually keep getting closer and closer and closer and closer together as they come up. That's because of the math of the, the, the change of pitch. When they get up in here, the pins often on most ma manufacturers, they actually change sizes, they get a little bit smaller. Eventually, <coughs> you come to a point here where some regulators, we refer to this as the step. The step down from double pin discs to single pin discs. So the single pin discs are needed because these increments just keep getting tighter and tighter and tighter up here. Everything gets right on top of each other. And so we have to change the kind of disc that's used in order to get the, the particular semitone. Thank you so much for watching the Get Curious About Your Harp series presented by the American Harp Society. I hope it was informative and gave you a better understanding of harps, especially yours. Now, go and play.